Hi guys! Hello! Welcome to another week of Females Unfiltered. Yes! Miriam, it is hot as hell this week. Okay, it's not that hot. I, I mean, think you're overreacting okay, a little bit. Okay, for me, it's, it's hot as hell. It's warmer than what it has been, I uh -huh, will have to uh -huh, say, uh -huh. which is nice. Which is really nice. I like that it's kind of warm during the day and then like 60 to 50. Actually, that's at perfect at that's night. That's kind of my favorite. That's my only thing that I like about hot weather are the evenings are yes, the best. Because then you can just like open Sit with your the window. windows oh my open. Oh, God, that's the best. And if I had a convertible, I would, oh, I would drive with the top down honestly, at night. Honestly, that's, that's the thing. We both drive the same car. We do. Um, and that's the one thing that I miss about my old car is that I don't have a sunroof. I don't have a sunroof. So, you in know, what? I briefly had a convertible for about three okay. years. And then I realized I actually hate the sun because I'm so white. You are very white. Um, so then I was like, I don't even use the convertible except on the five occasions where it was perfect night right. driving weather. <laughs> night driving weather. So then I... Like a vampire. You literally go out in a convertible I, at night. So then I got rid of it. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Okay. What was it? It was like it was a Solara, a Toyota Solara. I love. Oh. I'm very loyal to Toyota. Dude, I love Toyota. Very we loyal have, to Toyota. We've had Toyotas my entire life. We had a Forerunner. We have a Land. We had a Land Cruiser. We have now a Tundra. Yeah. I've got a Yaris. Yes. You know, I've, we I've love Toyotas. A long line of Toyotas. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. Did you have a favorite thing this week? Yes. Okay. Let's hear it. So my favorite thing is that I quit my job. One of my jobs. <laughs> Yeah, I quit one of my jobs. I was, um, I was super, super unhappy. Um, I love the company as a whole, but I was really, really unhappy, and um, I needed to say no. And uh, it's been a long time since I've actually said no to something, uh -huh. and I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. I have to go. I have to find my happy. I have to do my thing. And okay, so I did it. You did it. I did it. And also, I opened a show this week. I Tomorrow. love that as well. Yeah. Is a little part of you concerned about money? A little bit, but as soon as I closed that door, another door opened, oh, and I was like, oh, marvelous. this is great. I just like walked right into another so job. So did you get, you got a new job already? Yeah. Do you like the new job thus far? I mean, oh, I know I you're it. new, you're I new, I start, well, new. I, everyone's nice at right, first. Right, right. Well, and it's not even like, uh, it's not even like a, like, like a job job. Like a job job. I'm like nannying. Oh. It's great. Oh, yeah, that's it. You just got to work wonderful. with kids. It's kids. You oh, just my God. Chill with kids. And it's one kid, and it's three days a week, and I still have my other job that, you know, like, pays also really well, so it's like, good. Things I'm okay. Good. I'm okay. Good. I'm okay for right now. I just have to find an, it, my, this. Oh so she got a thing. She got, she got a thing, guys. <laughs> the hair. A um, thing. Anyway, I, this one, this nanny gig ends in July, so I have to find something, another thing okay. by July, but the good thing is that I'm not driving to the west I live on the east side and I'm not driving to the west side every single day anymore, yeah. which is such a breath of fresh air like it is such a relief that I can stay on the east side mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and just like fuck off and yeah commute can really fuck up your Los Angeles experience it really can I, I mean, mean you can either yeah. love or hate the city based on yes, your commute alone yes yes okay exactly. well good these are all good what things what about you what's your what's, what is your well guys I'm just gonna go ahead and nerd out on you my favorite thing this week was the Game of Thrones yes. premiere I had a, I had a watch party uh, at I my house I know that you were invited I know I'm sorry I was mm, watching it with my other friend okay fine we had like <laughs> lots of yummy food that I, I feel like was Game of Thrones ish yeah it was uh, we had alcohol so much my alcohol my sister provided party favors in the form of Game of Thrones socks Everyone got a pair of Game of Thrones socks. Okay, we had so I severely missed out We had balloons. Party. We had Game of Thrones Dang. Oreos. I mean, we really. Oh, I really want to get those Game of Thrones Oreos. Apparently, though. they're like being sold on eBay for an exorbitant amount of money oh, at this point are. because of you know. Are they like sold out? On I don't know. I, I haven't seen them. I've been looking. Okay. Because I kind of want some I more, but um. I feel like you need to do this for the finale. Yeah, yeah. So I that was Carolina. She's coming on later, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so my favorite thing was the Game of Thrones yes, premiere, girl. but we don't need to nerd out on that right now. No. We got we got other things we to talk. So we got other to things. Talk about. To talk. Lot going on today, so guys. Okay, what did you find going on this week? You want okay, to talk about? so this is so I yeah, was let's reading comments and people were like, "Oh my God, zombies!" But I'm like, mm, "Let's read a little bit more about this." Okay, yes, so let's. apparently um, there's been a radical experience. Scientists have been able to restore activity in pigs' brains after they've been slaughtered. Um, and it's not like restoring activity, like not restoring um, cellular activity that uh, makes right. them like move. Not around. like cognitive activity. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's just like so. What they have is this this thing, this fluid, I guess, called brain X, 
And it's just, a, it's like a chemical that they place the brain in and it kind of restores the brain activity, but it's not... Yeah, it's yeah like cognitive. the pig's memory doesn't come back. Exactly, exactly. But it's what it what they're trying to see. They're doing the tests so that they can see if there is um, something that they can provide for brain dead people. Okay. So like people in a coma or right, whatever. Right. Um. So they're not like bringing. They're not bringing the pigs back to life. Uh. So they're not bringing. You know. Yeah. But they did say. They did say. Which was what was kind of funny was that I read is that they um. The, the researchers that were doing it said that as soon, if there was any sign of cognitive cellular activity, they would immediately stop what they were doing. Like, they would, they would like, yeah, because kill, like, kill the brain That pig doesn't need to relive its last moment. Well, that's the thing is, like, they, they also don't want to be able to bring, they don't want that kind of research yeah. to be able to bring people, like, back to life because mm-hmm. they don't know what that, you know what I mean? A little bit crazy. Uh, a lot of people are... You know, in uproar about it. A lot right. of the vegans are up in right. uproar about right. it because they're like, what more do these pigs need to, you know, and, which I understand. Which but, I totally get. But I think that I find it extremely fascinating um, because the science is crazy. Science is Like, bananas. as Bill Nye says, science rules. Science does rule. So this made me think of something kind of fucked up. Yeah. Animal farm? Uh, no. So, um, guys... You all, some of you know, I used to live in Saudi Arabia. Miriam oh, yeah. also. Oh, fuck Miriam yeah. also used to live in Saudi I did. Arabia. Yeah, for sure. So I was always told, and maybe this is not true. So in Saudi Arabia, they do beheadings. So that's, that's, yes. that yes, happens regularly yes, every yes, Friday, which is equivalent to our Sunday, in Chop Chop Square and Clock Tower. And um, I had always heard that right after you behead somebody, if you were to hold their head up to look at their body, there's like, Two seconds where they would see their body before the, before the brain function shuts off. That's fucked up. But here's the thing: like, how did we even come to this conclusion? It's not right. like we tested this out and exactly. asked somebody, right? Because you, you can't. You they can't. Clearly can't. You talk. can't. But they did. Yes, they did. Like, test to see if there was any sort of like, you know. Yeah. Is there? You know. And I also think that they're looking for like, is there life after death? That's also what they're we thinking We would all about. love to know the answer to that question. I, you know, I don't know if I would, though. I don't know if I want to know if there's you don't life think after you'll... death. Okay. I Only because, like, I, like, I read this article, yeah. and then I woke up this morning, and I realized, I just kind of looked at myself, and I was like, wow, I am a literal brain that is, like, the way that I'm moving is because my brain, I am a, like, being. Yeah that is just living and like you can die at any moment so like why think like oh you know well if i come back i want to be like just fucking see i kind of want to i hope there is some kind of life after death because otherwise i get very sad about this is just it yeah you you die and it's done i mean there's there's nothing so okay so my roommate and i were talking about this we were talking about it and he was like okay so there have been many accounts of people who When they, like, go into a coma, if they wake up from it, they're just, like, I was walking down the street, and then I woke up. Yeah. Like, there was nothing. And then I just, there was was nothing. Like, they don't go someplace. They don't remember. Right. But there are also books of, of children, books about children who have recounted these memories. Right. Of their, like, previous lives. Which, like, I totally believe in, I I believe in reincarnation, but I also... I'm very skeptical, which kind of recounts what well, I just said about Well, if you guys remember, we know. have had on, and I'm totally down to have her on one more time before the season's oh, over, yeah. Sloan Bella. She's um, a psychic, and we've had her on twice. Oh, yeah. And she says there is a form of, there is life after Something, death. yeah. And we talked a lot about spiritual and what a ghost is, mm-hmm. and, and that, yes, you can choose to be reincarnated, or you can choose not to be reincarnated. Right? And you just kind of live in the in-between. Dude, I'm totally... Are, are you watching the OA on Netflix? Oh, I finished that shit. Dude, okay, I'm Binge on season that. two. Binge that. Two days. And I'm like, woo! Season two is better than season one, and season one was damn good. Season one was really fucking good. Oh, season yeah. Season two is really good season, so far. Yeah. So, like, I'm watching that, I'm reading this, and I'm just like, what I know. the fuck? We are, science is getting so close to so many things. We're, like, on the cusp of everything right now, I feel. I feel like the next 15 years is going to be so bananas we can't even fathom it. Oh, it's going to be cuckoo bananas. Yeah. Very bananas. Yeah. 
So, um, one more little piece of info, guys, before yes. we bring on Carolina, Sorry. along with that cuckoo bananas, which I totally agree with. So, we're just going to talk real quick about CBD. I know yes. you're, you're a big cannabis, you know, activist yes. over here, yes, Miriam. Absolutely. We're all for that shit. Yes. Taking a month off right now. So, this is something that I didn't really think about. So, um, hemp has just been approved for farmers to start farming it at mass. Oh, dope. And farmers are very excited about having this new product that could really be lucrative, especially because... You know, Trump's fucking him up the asshole with his, his trade laws, even yeah. though they still support him. Not all, not all farmers, not all, not all farmers, farmers him. but the majority. Well, do. Um, so, <laughs> in any case, these are things that hemp is going to affect that I didn't even consider, which okay. I think is kind of amazing. Okay. So, for one thing, biodiesel. So, right. hemp can produce nearly four times as much oil per acre as the current um, source of soybeans. And it could be the if hemp could be the go-to for making fuel from a renewable plant source. Now, is it cleaner, or is it, or will it? I don't will it know. Produce just as much pollution when I they start. Don't, this is a great question. I don't know. We should research this, yeah. guys. Plastics. I didn't even think about this. Plastics. So it's the 2018 farm bill that legalized the production of uh -huh. hemp, and um, hemp can be an alternative to plastic. Oh yeah. Which is cool. As well as paper, an acre yes. of industrial hemp produces four times the amount of paper that one acre of tree does. Holy that shit. That is huge. That's a lot. And think of all the trees we'll save. So many. We can so save so many. many. I was very excited about that one. And then it said construction, one word, hempcrete. Hempcrete, hempcrete guys? Hempcrete. hempcrete. We don't know. And then we all know textiles already. There are hemp-based fabrics. Maybe some of you are aware, some of you not. But it can be a great stand-in for denim, wool, or your favorite athleisure wear. Ooh. And then once more, um, packaging. And the cannabis industry, packaging industry, is about to reach $5 billion because of packaging. So Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's really cool. So way to go, hemp. I'm excited oh, yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah. I would yeah. Okay. So on that note, guys, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to set up for Carolina. She's yes. going to come on. She's going to tell us what we just have to try in L.A. Yes. And we'll be right back, guys. Hang tight. Hi, guys. We're back. Hi. Carolina's with us from Press Pass L.A. How you doing, girl? I'm doing great. Surviving Coachella. Yes. yes. I feel like I'm old and my body's exhausted. Right? I go out on a party and I'm like, I need a vacation. A, a the nap party. vacation. A nap vacation. <laughs> from the, like event vacation. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. See, I am one of those people that have a seriously hard time staying up late. I mean, it is a struggle it's, yeah. for me to stay up late, but I feel like you got to be able to do that at Coachella. So on Saturday at Coachella, I'll be honest, I stayed up until five in the morning dancing and I clocked 12 miles and over 40,000 steps. Oh my gosh. And I, I like scratched it out. I put it on my IG. I scratched out like walking and running and I was like dancing. And then I had like the little uh, girl from Bob's Love. Burger. Oh, yes. Because I was like, yeah, I was Tina that night. Just <laughs> How much sleep do you think you got during Coachella weekend? None, because the first night right. I came in late right. and we were sharing rooms and I didn't want to wake up the person uh. I was sharing a room with, so I slept on the couch. Uh. But then somebody who didn't go out woke me up at 9 a.m., but I got home at 7. Oh, so I had damn. two hours. That just sounds like not fun Horrible. at all Horrible. But at that point, I was just like, I'm going to get coffee and just keep going. Like, yeah. I have the committed next, to yeah. the Coachella mindset. Yeah. I just like, I, I was like on that. auto. You know, like when you're tired and you're like on autopilot. Right. Your body That's just keeps up. going. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how yeah. much did you crash after Coachella? Did you take like a full day I slept 10 hours recovery? yesterday. Oh. Not on purpose. Okay, girl. Wow. I slept okay. through everything. Yeah. Yeah. I was just out. All right. Okay. I think I would have done the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As I... Mm. Well, the worst part is that night me. that we came home, we yeah. came home Monday morning, Yeah. I had to film, I also filmed the Arrow After Show for After Buzz. Yeah. Um, and DC Comics was super nice. They sent us this like whole bag of goodies to like tell the fans about and everybody watches and mm -hmm. like let them know. And um, yeah, but that goes on at like 11. So I didn't get home till midnight and I remember I couldn't even like form complete sentences without <laughs> slightly stumbling over my words. So apologies to everyone who watched that episode. Um, I wasn't as animated as normal because I was just trying to keep my eyes open. Right, yeah. right. Damn, yeah. girl. So are you going to take a chill weekend this weekend or no? No. 
I have work. There's I, no such thing as a chill weekend I, in LA. I, I totally agree. It's true. I totally agree. There's always work. So There's true. always something to do. My chill day was yesterday when my body just shut the like, cookie bitch, operation please. down. Okay. Uh -huh. I was like, pop, pop, pop. We're closed for business. <laughs> Do you have to go back to Coachella this weekend or no? No. Oh, thank God. I you look so horrified for like no. a split second. <laughs> I wouldn't survive. No. You uh, know, I would, I'd come back in a coffin. Oh, yeah. damn, sister. Okay, so what do we just have to try this week? What's going on with Dinner Diaries? Okay, so I'm really excited. This Friday, the full article is going to go live, and it's mm -hmm. about this awesome little spot called Concerto. Mm. It is located kind of between Mid Wilshire and Koreatown. Okay. It's in that like sweet mm -hmm, spot mm -hmm. where it's really close to LACMA, but you're like bordering right on K-Town. Yeah, yeah. So Concerto is an Italian restaurant mm. with a Korean fusion vibe to it. Oh, well, I this sounds very interesting. I am into the fusion restaurant. So good. The pasta is amazing. It's like you can get like an Alfredo pasta, but with like the kimchi sauce in Stop it as it. well. So it's a bit spicy. Okay. It's okay. absolutely delicious. Um, the menu's massive. There's literally something for everybody. The pizzas are phenomenal. Mm. Phenomenal. I did the prosciutto pizza and it was worth mm. it. Okay. But the cool thing is, First of all, the valet parking at Concerto is only $3. Hey! Holla at your girl. High five. Okay. okay. Where in LA do you get valet you parking don't. for three bucks? It's always like 15. Fucking parking LA 20, is such a 20, bitch. Just yeah. to go to a yeah, yeah. $3. Yeah. So if anything, you should go there just for the parking. Into it. But okay. it's cool too because it's a really eclectic restaurant. Yeah. And it says that when you walk in, there is an outdoor patio area, which is part of the main restaurant. And then to the left, there's another patio and a bar that you can have like small bites in Ooh. and a bar. And then when you walk in inside to the main restaurant, they have an entire um, coffee area because actually the owner is a coffee bean farmer from Hawaii. So wow, all the coffee fun. beans are his, they're roasted in house, they're premium made, and they make macaroons. Oh, so to like the right, it's shit. all um Wait, it's macaroons all or macarons? Macaroons. The ones with the coconut. Um no. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because Ma macarons no, no, no. are the little cookie with the stuff inside. Yeah, yeah, the, the little that macarons. That Bottega Louie does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like Fucking those. Love Still macarons. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love so those So all the different flavors, um, and those are in the back, and then you can go upstairs, and that's where they have, like, the proper dining room, oh. which is where we had dinner to check everything out. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, like, much more upscale. You can totally tell that people have, like, company parties, and they're a great place for a first date. I literally mm -hmm. watch this, this, like, the cutest couple on the planet on a date, mm -hmm, and I mm -hmm. say it like that because... The girl, literally, I, I know why I'm single now. Like, she was so freaking cute. Oh. She was so cute. And I was like, that's why I'm never that cute like, on a date. Like, cute physically or, like, considerate cute? Like, her actions were, like, so cute. He'd say something funny and she'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hey, she's going to get a ring on it. <laughs> I feel like you take me to dinner and I'm like a mom. Like, <laughs> 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 I'm trying to eat, don't talk. <laughs> I, I actually have a rule where I don't go on food dates until like at least the fourth I feel like that's totally fair. Because yes. I'm such a messy eater and I eat like a wild animal, so I want them to like me first before I like unleash <laughs> oh, that. Oh, see, I had them. a very different reason why I don't go on. See, I, I was talking to a guy that I went on a date with, okay. and he was saying that many men have this idea in the back of their head that women are just dating to get a free meal. He says it's like a common misconception, oh. and he hates going on first dates that are food dates because it's like, I don't even know you. I'm supposed to take you to eat. Like, there's like some yeah. weird, men are salty yeah. about this, so, which I don't give I a shit. I feel like I never date men who are salty. They're usually trying to like coerce me into dinner and I'm the which, one that's like, no, Which, by the way, me. I always have reservations about that. I'm like, if I let them buy me food, they're going to think they get to fuck me, which is fucked up, but you know yes. that is the mindset, oh, which is fucked up in itself. So I'm always like, let's meet for tea. And you know what? I can buy my own goddamn tea. And at that yep. rate, I'll buy yours too, motherfucker. Yep. We're on an even playing field. Yeah. No, you can pay for my food. It's fine. <laughs> I'll decide if I want to fuck you later. <laughs> All right. Teach their own. Teach their own. Love that. It's fine. Let me teach tell you, when I was in college, I used to go to dinner with guys, and if I didn't like them, my best friend would show up, and they would end up buying dinner for both of us, <gasps> and they would be like, thank you so much. Bye. I can't do that. Oh sad my I can't do that. I would feel so bad. Wow. If I don't like a guy... Well, first of all, I always offer to pay. Well, I usually always. like them as like a friend, but I just didn't want to sleep with them. So she'd come, she'd get food, and then we would leave. They never complained. They'd be like, do you guys want to come out again? No, I feel like this mindset is what is giving the vibe of this negativity that's like put on there with men and dating. I was also like 18. True, you true. Know, whatever. You're learning. College, college, You're learning. college. 
They okay. didn't mind. No. All right, girl. Okay. You are way more savage than I am, sister. Yeah. I'm a savage. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Love it. We can dive into the psychosis behind that later now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Concerto LA, they have pizzas, they have pastas. They literally have everything. It's kind of mind-blowing. They have risotto. Damn. We also got a risotto while we were there, and they have a full dessert menu, so it's not like they just have like the macarons and then right. nothing and else. Yeah. No, no, no. They have everything so mm. there is literally something for everyone yeah Cherto. i like yeah. this and the cocktails are great too they okay have a full cocktail menu you can choose between a lot of different options um for me personally i really love the pizza and that says a lot because i'm from new york and i'm italian Ooh. and the pizza there is worth it i think that it'd be great to like go during the day especially if you spent like a day at lacma oh yeah mm. Just go to the bar area, order a pizza, grab a drink, and just hang with friends. It's a great spot, and you're only paying three dollars for parking. I, love I can't this. get over that. I love this yeah. very much. So okay, so so for those who are thinking of going on a date to Concerto, mm -hmm. um, regardless of who's paying, what are the prices like so they know like how much money they got to make sure to have in their bank account before they get there? Yeah, it's super affordable. Um, I think the most expensive meal was like twenty nine dollars, okay. and that was Which like the standard. most expensive. Okay. Yeah. I want. I could be wrong, but I feel like it. It wasn't that pricey. Right. Most things are between like twelve and up. Yeah, that's, that's pretty yeah, standard. Like pricing. pretty standard, yeah. like mid range. Like you might spend like sixty bucks on dinner. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah. I would say that's normal. That's normal. Yeah. Okay. Dope. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Some girl. concerto. That sounds delicious. Concerto. Mm, let's get on that. Yeah. yeah. So I highly recommend concerto. Great parking, great food. But I mean, they should have you at the parking. Yeah. yeah. So what did you eat, sidebar, what did you eat in Coachella? Anything delicious? Like, did you get into the fair food? Like, what happened? Oh. <laughs> did you just not eat? You just Was drank there all not week? Good food there? No, so I went to a lot of events. Yeah. So a lot of the food was catered. Okay. So like Revolve had like In and Out and mm. uh, DoorDash, and DoorDash was actually the coolest food activation ever. Mm -hmm. So you went around to this guy with a menu, and you picked out what you wanted, how you wanted it. Like I got a turkey sandwich with gluten free bread. You know, okay, whatever. girl. You try and stay away from the gluten. Yeah. And then they give you a ticket because you could customize your food. They give you a ticket. And then you give your ticket to a girl who then tells you what door your food would be ready at. And there was like a rainbow of doors. <gasps> and then clever. when it was ready, the little light would go off and you just go get your food and then take it to the picnic benches. Oh, it was that's really so cute. Cool. That was one of my favorite like foodie activations, and that was for Revolve. Um, and they also had an acai bowl uh, mm. station. So I made yeah. one of those and like, that you know, out. That. it's called like amaze bowls. And they do, they had them last year too, mm. but at the pool party. And this year they had them at like the proper festival. Okay. Yeah. Um, Cause Revolve does like several activations mm -hmm. during Coachella. They have a pool party, they have a night party, they have the daytime. Great fun, mm. total cool. great fun. Um, and then K-Rock had one of the best food. They had uh, proper burgers, like massive, like homemade looking yeah. burgers and fries and then they also had a taco truck yeah. um k-rock yeah yeah them. their party is really good actually it's like really chill it's not like the dressy vibe okay. so you don't have to feel pressure to be right. a fashionista to go cool. right. it really is about the music and the great part is they build a stage mm -hmm. on the side of the house that faces the pool so you can literally just float around in the pool while you listen to the jams oh that's ah. awesome yeah that is good that's yeah, what yeah. I love and they this. have like lawn games so you can play all sorts of like different lawn games as you do mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. it's Awesome, Love awesome. Love um, and then let's see, who else had good food? Zoasis didn't have food, but they had great drinks. Mm. They had really great drinks. A little bit too great. Okay. A little bit too great. Happens. And Adidas had a party. So Adidas. Oh, that shit looked amazing. That was the one I posted on my Instagram. Yeah, that shit looked great. The one that great. was like on the beach. It was yeah. at the oh. Zanyara estate. Oh. Love me some wild. Adidas. Yeah. But I made a I made a jersey. I have like Ooh. an actual like basketball jersey with like my number and my name on it. Oh, I love that this. Was cool swag. But 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 the food. So the food, they had like a bar and every bar had a different station. So there was like a mimosa station, a Bloody Mary station, oh, a damn. gin station. Okay. Like it was really <gasps> cool. And all the mimosa station was like really high end. There was like a white peach and like something else like <laughs> oh, blends. Right. I was like, I just want champagne and like a splash of, of the of, thing. Of the Cause stuff. the guy made it the first time and it was like juice and a little, I was like, no, no, 
wrong. Reverse. Right, we need to reverse this. Right, right, right. Otherwise, I'm just going to drink it and it's juice and it's calories and I don't need that sugar? like that. Yeah, no, right. no, no, no. Just give me the alcohol. But sugar. the food was amazing. So they had, um, I had like an octopus ceviche that they made that was really spicy with an arugula salad okay. with like shaved Parmesan and diced tomatoes. Damn, girl. So that was like what I got from there. But they also had um, a premium coffee stand where they would like make coffee for you and they also had um so intense yeah yeah it was like real catered food and they had like um a create your own taco bar mm -hmm. and i think they had a little pork bun like hawaiian pork bun mm -hmm. bar i don't know because i was really i love seafood yeah so i was like hardcore over at the like octopus it. ceviche just yeah. like yeah, shoveling just it yummy. in um and then levi's levi's had a good food too but they were like all tray pass but they had this white truffle grilled cheese with that, rosemary that, that they bomb. were passing out, and that was really good. But it wasn't like a proper food station. It was like little bites. Yeah, yeah. And then so they hungry. kept coming towards me with the crudité. There was like little like crudité. Setting up the vibes, all if you the don't, vibes. If you don't know crudité, crudité is like raw veggies like stuck in hummus, and I was like... What are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to go for the grilled cheese. Why do you keep bringing me the, the veggies? Crudite? Right, right. You're like that's not where I'm at. And almost life. all the parties, I was actually really surprised. Almost all of the the big parties that with the invites had um, fresh pressed juices oh, nice. and like coconut water so and so they everybody had, hydrated. Very yeah, but they now. had very healthy options. Okay. I felt like okay. from previous love, years love. where it was just like eat some shit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that it's bad. Everybody wants fast food, but yeah. It, yeah. it was like a but good maybe mix. Maybe not of, like ten yeah. days in a row. Well, yeah, and especially not when it's super. I hot think out. Everyone and everyone's would in like no if, clothes. If Coachella was yeah. ten, ten days, days, people would actually die no. just so that you, if you don't know, it's three. It's three, three days. days. I was three. Days. Three. Days. three. How was the How was the weather while you were there? Was it super super perfect. hot, or was it like? No, this year it was perfect. Okay, there cool. was uh, the That's first. Amazing. The first day it was kind of hot, and I was like, okay, this is what it's going to be. Then the second day was slightly overcast and warm. Delightful. Which was very delightful. And then the last day, it was like, it was like in and out. Like really sunny, slightly overcast. Really okay, sunny, cool. slightly overcast. Okay, yeah. Right. We're so done with it, was, all that. it was good weather. Okay, I like this. Yeah. This is good. All right, guys. This has been Carolina this month. We love that. We got we all do. the food low down. So concerto. 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 Get it. Get some. Mm. Um, she'll be with us next month before we break for the summer. I can't believe we're that I close know, to our so hiatus close. already. I know. The hell? Not so. And if you guys want to know more about concerto, yes. you can check it out on Press Pass LA. The article will be live tomorrow. Sweet. Friday, April eighteenth. Eighteenth. I feel like oh nineteenth. Nineteenth. So Friday, April nineteenth. Um, it'll be part of our dinner diary series, and you'll see a full breakdown of what I ate, what I drank, what I thought. It'll all be there Full right shebang. for you. Awesome. And if you guys, you know, are loving some Carolina and want some more in your life, what's your Instagram, bro? You guys can find me on Instagram at LinaBean113. It's L-I-N-A-B-E-A-N-113. There we go, Sweet. folks. We are going to take a quick break. We're going to set up for Sharon. I don't see her, but maybe she's, she's over hiding there. behind a plant. Her. Okay, perfect. And we'll be right back. Yes. Hi, guys. We're back. Hi. Sharon's with us. Yay. Welcome to the show, Sharon. <laughs> Thank you. Guys, Sharon is like a one-woman do-it-all machine. Get out. A hey, badass. <laughs> An actual badass. Like, literally. <laughs> if you look it up in the dictionary, there's Sharon. There she is. Okay, so obviously you're an actress. You're an activist. Obvi. <laughs> I mean, hello. You got to have some real fucking confidence to rock this look. Hell yo. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we're just going to jump into it, if you don't mind. Let's dive in. Let's dive in. in. Dive on in. So you are a cancer survivor. I am. Congratulations. Thank you. That is amazing. Yes, it is. And um, what I thought was, like, if there is anything interesting to say about it, is that... Cancer is so boring. I mean, like, just the, the <laughs> mundaneness of it all. I mean, it happens so often to so many people. I know. It's like... No. Um, well, I guess... The most interesting, th I'm the most interesting cancer survivor in America. No. Um, you could be. I could be. Uh, no, I started Bald is Beautiful because yeah, of that. Yeah, that's yes. what I was going to so say. So I feel like Maybe? if something is to come out of this journey that was interesting, it is really yes. how you kind of walked your way into acting mm -hmm. and into the limelight. Yes. Which I was wondering, when that came into your lap, were you like, Oh, this is great. This is something that I can't wait to do. Or were you just oh, kind of like, no, not might as well. Sure, I guess. It didn't. It, it actually, I did this to myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, it was, the idea was born out of, uh, it's sort of a long convoluted story, so I'll try to nutshell it, which sure. is, um, I took a picture with an actor who was doing, she was the lead in the play Wit, which is about a burning mm -hmm. cancer, and her, she's bald, and Emma Thompson mm -hmm. did the mm -hmm. film version on HBO. Um, and that pic I volunteered to shave her head, and the newspaper was there, and they took this amazing picture of like where she's bald after I shaved it, and we're laughing and holding each other's faces, uh, and it's the most joyful picture. I bet it's beautiful. I love it. And so that picture ended up on the cover of Arts and Leisure section of Miami Herald. I was down in Miami when I got diagnosed and seeing my parents, and that mm -hmm. week turned into three years. Um, so people started calling my parents, and that picture was so joyful that people were sending it to people going through treatment or for themselves to feel like positive and like I can get through anything if these two gals can, you know what I mean? So I was like, oh, image, changing perception of, ah, okay. So when I finished with cancer thing, I want to do Bald is Beautiful. Yeah. And part of that was using visual media like print and, and TV and film. I had never acted before. Mm -hmm. That my sister, my twin sister, identical twin, Lisa, Mount Hey, girl. <laughs> Um, she's an actor. She's been doing it for a long time, and um, she it was very encouraging and supportive. I did a play with her through her called Off the Muff, and talked about my ovarian cancer journey, and white knuckled it through the whole thing. Yeah. But she said, you know, do this. You can do it. And that's how I started. And then I just started doing it. I had a headshot with a mission statement on the back, and started pounding the pavement in New York City. Did some off, off, off Broadway theater stuff. Yeah. And, you know, a couple commercial things and got my union card. Yeah, and coveted union card. And came out here and wow. started doing it. And so I, I, it didn't fall into my lap. I actually <laughs> put it on my lap. Right, to right. Do it. So, and I was terrified. It's, yeah. It's a terrifying thing to Absolutely. be an actor yeah. and a performer. It's yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> but it's so gratifying, too. I found, I caught the bug when I started mm -hmm. doing it, and I really found my love and passion for it. Yeah. Mm. For separate from, but still integral and fueled by Bald is Beautiful, I have found my passion for acting, for sure. Um, so I was looking to your IMDb. Oh, no way, Cyberstalking. I mean, awesome. what? <laughs> and, you know, I noticed you have, obviously, plenty of little projects under your belt, but I feel like when you got Marvel, that was, like, the big one. This is the biggest That's thing the I've ever big been one. a part of. So how did it yes. feel going from like, you know, the smaller projects, which is great, which is wonderful, you're moving your acting muscles, to like, yes. so you want to be part of one of the biggest franchises in history? Sure. <laughs> um, it is extraordinary. Totally surreal. Um, the other thing I say about that, though, there are no small parts. Absolutely. And I mean that, it's Absolutely. not even cliche. Oh, yeah, no. Like, we're all here to tell a story, and we have to realize the writer's vision, the director's right. vision, we're all working together to right. do that. So. Mm -hmm. I, and I've got, I worked those small thing. I worked with William H. Macy. Wow. I, which I definitely I worked with about. Tim Roth. Right. Yes. I mean, so even those, like, they were short days. It was kind of like, oh, man, I wish I were doing an all day thing. Right. Or like a, but it's four hours of working with William H. Macy, getting some nuggets of acting wisdom right. just in those small moments. And, and uh, Alex Borstein was the writer on that episode of Shameless that I was on. And, and I love her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I got to actually kind of sort of help her write the scene I was in because she awesome. needed it to be longer. And I was like, yeah. oh, I kind of have some experience speaking at a cancer support group. I can offer some, some little ideas. Yeah, yeah. And so those experiences are amazing. This is just beyond. Like, yeah. yeah. This is uh, otherworldly, literally, figuratively everything because I'm a Marvel fan. Have yeah. been since childhood. So it's just... Uh, like. I can't even contain the buzz that I feel. I just see the Marvel logo somewhere, and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm part of that. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Right. It's truly, like, I don't think right. that will ever go away, that feeling. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Well, I saw you twice on the big screen, and I was yeah. like, that's her. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. It, it's amazing to see my head green and pointy-eared as it is. How uh, long did that makeup take? Um, Two hours. Two hours. It wasn't so bad. No, that's actually. not terrible. Yeah. Two no. hours. That's no, because it was really just neck up. Yeah. You know, we did. They oh, fitted me for right prosthetic now. arm stuff, but we they ended up just doing body paint and okay. stuff for that. Did they do the so. whole like they had to you close your eyes? They the face the, cast. Oh my god. So that was the other geek like geek moment. Part. It was like, <laughs> what a cool thing. I'm at Legacy Effects <laughs> behind the velvet curtain of where the magic happens. I'm getting it. It's I can't. What even. a feel! I'm literally getting butterflies <laughs> just thinking about it. That's so cool. Unreal and amazing, and and I'm sure that they could feel that energy yeah. from me because the right. whole time they had to, okay, you got to stop smiling. Okay, <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you don't want the cast to be no. Okay, all right. And Ben Mendelsohn. 
God, he's incredible. Yeah, he was amazing to work with. He's incredible. I really I love, I love his him. work. So. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh, my God. And just in case people Larson. don't know what a scroll is, because oh, yes. confession, yes. I did not, <laughs> let's tell people what's a scroll. A scroll is an alien race. Uh, they are shape-shifting. They, uh, they have been portrayed previously and historically throughout the decades as pure evil villain, right. which is the other part of why actually I couldn't talk about my role or the plot mm. line for a whole year. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, that's, I Quite don't know how you did that. To keep. Uh, because they sort of added a bit of a twist, which I still won't say overtly. Mm -hmm. okay. For okay. those who haven't seen Infinity. it, go yep. see it right now. Yep, yep, yep. Before yep. Endgame, and yes. go see Infinity War, then Captain Marvel, then right. Endgame. Yes. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, so that was very interesting, and when you see it, you as you get to know who I am, the plot line and the storyline and the things that we are a part of saying about things that are happening in the world right now mm -hmm. is extremely mm -hmm. personal and powerful yep. for me. And mm -hmm. I am just so honored to be part of it on every possible level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I have a two-part <laughs> question for you. Okay. You touched on how you work with William H. Macy and Shameless. Yes. And um, it was a scene where, not that you had to cry, but it was kind of like assumed maybe you would cry. Yes. And as, because me and I are, we are actresses yes. as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I just read how, like, I guess you you didn't cry exactly when you wanted to, and William H. Macy kind of pulled you aside and gave you some sweet, comforting advice. Yes, after, well, after the 21st take. I, right? <laughs> after take number 21. Uh, because the first take was magical. I in that. bet. And, and uh, that was actually the, the rehearsal, the run-through, because they were ah. trying to get, the, I know, they were trying to get the timing of, because if you see the camera is kind of going in a circle, the cameraman is standing in the center of the circle turning around, so they wanted it to be time to start right. and then end with me. Right. So that was amazing because some of the women in there were actually also uh, survivors in treatment and some were not. Um, but some of them were just familiar ball gals that I've seen in other stuff because, yeah. you know, yeah. we're kind of our own little Right, thing. right. Um, but that first take was, because it is very personal Absolutely. to me. And the things I was saying were things, for the most part, other than being a mother, which I'm not, were things that I have said. I'm, I am the fixer. I am the person who takes care of everybody else so to be in the position so it was lots of waterworks mm -hmm. many many times waterworks and they really wanted the waterworks and they even asked me do you, after the t 20th time do you want and I was like no no I could do it and then it didn't quite come out in those final few takes and I, I was you know the directors are going to tell you if they didn't get what they right. needed but afterwards I was kind of lamenting that to yeah. Mr. Macy and he said you know the thing is sometimes it's more powerful for people to see that you want to cry and don't. Yeah. yeah. And and that ended up the take that they used. That's the one they used. So okay. it may not be that reason, but but you know. Yeah. That's the one they used. Yeah. So yeah. Was it kind of a, a surreal moment getting this beautiful piece of advice from a man who's been working for years and years and years? Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was like, okay, so I can just let go of any insecurity I have whatsoever right. because William H. Macy just told me <laughs> you did a great job. And he, after the first few takes too, anyway, that were very emotional, he did say, you know, it's just really wonderful. And, and I was doing it pretty real. Mm -hmm. And the show has this quirky com comedic edginess to yep, it. Yep. So they didn't want it that real. Mm -hmm. Right, too. right. And was like, they were kind of, you know, can you, <laughs> it was so funny. Can you make it funny? <laughs> Bring it a little up. Laugh it up there, girl. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. but yeah, the whole experience was incredible too. Yeah, and you also did a Revlon ad, right, in People Magazine with that your was well, not an ad. That was a. They had this stand set up. I used to do the Revlon uh, Revlon Run Walk for yeah. women every mm -hmm. year, and I did it in home. New York is the home event, and then when I came out here, I was doing both New York and LA. Yeah. Um, and that was that's my favorite day of the year. They don't do them anymore after 20 years. She. Okay, all right, all right, on to other things. Um, but it was a stand they had set up for people to just take a picture, like, you know, yeah. if, you're, if, you, if you're a hero, whatever. My brother was kind of like, go, do it. And I was like, oh. just, come on, just right. do it. Hey. He's like, okay, I'll take my picture, and I did my dorky, hey, with my medal on and yeah, everything. Yeah. And then they let me know, like, you're a Revlon role model. And uh. I was like, what? Like, okay. Okay, all right. I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> So it was an unofficial ad, but yes. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't even know about it. Like, someone sent it to me and said, oh, my God, did you see yourself? And I was like, nope, okay, I have to buy a few right, copies right. of that. Wow. Yeah. And you also did um, a documentary for PBS as well. Yes, I hosted, and I was in And you interviewed, interviewed, yeah. For that. Um, how was that for you? That was amazing, because that, again, total random. I put my website up. That was one of the first things I did in 2002. Um, just sort of like, okay, I would love to do a book at some point, but, you know, these days with the World Wide Web, 
I can get my story out there faster, and I found so many stories that were inspiring for me when I was going through stuff. So my, why wouldn't my voice, you know, do the same possibly? So I put up the website, and people, this is the magic of the world wide interwebs. Right? Yeah, <laughs> people it is find magical. you. Yeah, yeah. They sure yeah do. right. I would get emails from all over the world, that, and that tripped me out because I'm an analog girl in the digital world. Mm. So this stuff mm -hmm. still trips me out. But I put it out there, and. This a producer a guy who had done other Brian Skeen is his name and and someone else another woman that I I ended up bringing on who I met uh, randomly I met someone on the subway who complimented oh, my hair and I told her that. about what I was going through she said oh my friend so so she and I connected and then he and I connected and then the three of us ended up uh, collaborating Amazing. on this documentary for and he's done other health related documentaries before mm -hmm. and it took it was actually eight years I think in the making from the first time we started okay. emailing yeah. each other mm -hmm. and then getting everything together and the funding and it was kind of amazing how long it took and right. then we then at the last minute secured the PBS airing yeah. of it so that was just that's great. fantastic yeah. yeah it's still out there and available right see guys get it get yes. it um so do you love how much you save on shampoo I love saving time and Girl, money. Yes. You both. <laughs> All of that stuff. There yes. was a brief period of time where I as well shaved my head. Oh, really? And it was so great. It was great. I mean, this is like, I've shaved just now, and I've, I've still like lately been like, should I do it again? Yeah, and if she have a little, it? is it a V or a check mark? What's going on She fucked there? it up a little bit. <laughs> She fucked it up. Sorry, I didn't mean it, to no, no, it's, no, it's a check mark, and then I have a C on this side, but, um, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, I used to try to get a design of some sort, but oh. I was like, girl, obviously the bottom part has to be shorter than the top part, what are we doing with our check mark skills? Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's great, and it's very liberating, I, I kind of encourage so women to do it, right? at least once before, the, I, I, I don't know why I picked 35 as like a... Sure, a milestone age, but like before they're 35, every woman should shave her head. Yeah. yeah. And just experience that liberation of, you know, not tying our identity to our into hair. it. Absolutely. And, you know, maybe some of it creeps back in when it goes back in, but I don't know. It, it's just feels I love like, it. And I feel like it's yeah. such a confidence booster in a weird mm -hmm. way. Yeah. And, and the other thing of it is, is that it dispels, for me, it dispels the myth. It's, it's real, but it's not real that, that it's, that people don't like it. Like yeah. I've got I, way I totally more agree with you. Than other one hundred percent. I love. You know? love. You're right. There is a myth that like whatever your sexual identity is, right. that people you know yeah. tend to go for people with longer hair better. Yeah. But I'm like, in my experience, that is not. That yeah, is not I, been if the you case. own it and you're confident with it, I think that can honestly move mountains. And it's kind of a thing that feeds itself too, because if you're not, maybe if you're not feeling confident, but the more you walk around with it, and you could like, stand oh up God, straighter and straighter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's really interesting. Way more positive feedback yeah. in the woman on the street experiences. Yeah. yeah. Walking through life as a bald chick. Yeah, and I totally yeah. agree. But part of it when I had long hair was to be invisible for me. Like okay. I was hiding. I was like, you know, badass doing my music business stuff, but long. Uh, hair, right. ba all black baggy men's clothes, right, you know, right. like I'm, you know, I'm here to like market you and like make uh -huh. you, uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm just here doing stuff, you know, yeah. like don't look at me, look over there. Right. Yeah. Um, and that, just, so this journey for me has all, also been about embracing my power and my femininity. Right, and being right. okay with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you, so yeah, I saw you went to college for like music, I'm a tomology, music tomology. And, uh, Say I, it for I me. I just want to see how many times you Wait, I, I was trying like not to look at my notes. I'm like, if I look at my notes, I'll read it. But it was like. Ethnomusicology. Ethnomusicology. Thank yeah. you. I totally fucked that one up. I went to Barnard College, actually. Which is a very interesting Colony major University. in, a, in a, of itself. Yes, they have, they had a graduate program. At the time, they only had a graduate program. And it's yeah. basically music and anthropology combined. That's the yeah. easiest way to yeah. kind of explain what it is. And it, those were my two favorite interests. I, I went through, I was pre-med architecture first because I wanted to do, before people were talking about feng shui, I actually, <laughs> I wanted to, I, I had, I was going to be a She was feng shui. I was. I was going to be a psychiatric architect. That's oh, what I called that? myself. And then I found out that people were already doing it. I was like, I didn't, I want to be the first. I'm never right. <laughs> but hey, uh, I just, after chemistry, I was like, mm, yeah. I don't think I could do eight years of this stuff. Right. And then I was like, okay, maybe psychology or architecture. Right. But then I didn't really like that so much. And then just architecture. But I realized I don't really have a passion for drawing and things. Like, yeah. Mm. So then I was like, okay, what do I love? I love music and I love anthropology and the study of culture and people and society. And, and then I found out about the graduate department. Yeah. So I designed the major as an undergraduate. I got you. So I'm the first BA in ethnomusicology mm -hmm. from Barnard College. Yes. 
Like, so do you still they do anything with that? They have an undergraduate program now. Look, see, you were the first. You, you started it. it you up, started man. it. You know, laid I actually got into a little email back and forth with someone, uh, like, because I said that uh, on someone's page. Um, they said, just like, well, actually, there is an ad. I like, yeah, but there wasn't when I was there. And then we, he actually was challenging <laughs> you know, like, me. You, like, pulled your dates and your statistics? I did. And he was like, oh, my gosh, you're right. Show you me the receipts, man. Like, Thank you. God. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you still kind of work with music in a big way in your life now, or it's just something that you're passionate uh, no, about? No, the funny thing, like I had originally before I got diagnosed, I left the music business because okay. I, I love music too much to work for a record company. <laughs> I hear you. Um, so the art versus commerce dichotomy right. was just the, the commerce was winning too much, and yeah. I was like, I can't justify my 20-hour days to myself. Anymore. I loved. I was working in, in the jazz biz. That's what you know. Yeah. In jazz mecca, New York City. Yeah. I was in heaven. I loved it. But then after a while, I was just starting to feel like I don't. I'm not feeling gratified anymore. I feel like I'm not serving what it is I want to serve. Right. And, um, so I left because I love music so much. It's still the fire in my belly. Like yeah. I still like. Yeah. I, I like putting people together and introducing you. Like one of my favorite things to do when I worked there. Yeah. Was to take friends into the vaults in the library. Oh, I hope I don't get in trouble giving free oh. product away. But I would let people go shopping in the library at on prime like to give them like a jazz yeah. starter kit. Yeah. I loved That's doing amazing. that. I love it. And going to hear music. I was out in the clubs till five six yeah. in the morning. Yeah. You know, in the jazz wow. scene for the for 10, 15 years. Okay. Oh burning the midnight oil, yeah. yes. 5 a.m. oil. Right, yeah. right. Midnight so 5 a.m. I don't know how it will realize itself. Somehow the music It'll stuff come will come back, back yeah, together. Because my dream was to, to be a producer and like artist development, which is kind of a lost art yeah. these days. I think and it's really important, though, artist development. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Under Underappreciated, yeah. but uh, something that needs to happen Yeah. still. And so it's something I still love. I don't know how it will manifest. And okay. Kind of bringing all the beautiful so music if, back together. I don't know. If someone watching is like, Sharon Cat, I would be interested in paying her some sort of money to help her develop me as an artist. I'm just helping you manifest it right now. Do we have like a contact email that you're comfortable giving? Is there something? Is there a way that people could like approach you to do this? To do? I don't. I don't know if I would trust myself now to do it only because the landscape of, of marketing in the world and retail industry has changed. Okay, so okay. I'm a little behind on that, but they can always go to my website, baldisbeautiful.org. Do it. And my, my email is Sharon at baldisbeautiful.org. And reach out to me, and I certainly still know tons of people in the right. industry, and I will listen to music and maybe yeah. refer people. And okay, I still, okay. I still, I still you're still a music connector. Together. You're still a music yeah, connector. Yeah, I still do that. Okay, yes. we like that. Absolutely. But if you also want to see Sharon as a really kick-ass lizard, I feel like you guys should go check out the Marvel film. We're not lizards. We're, we're lizards. scrolls. Scrolls. I know. I know. They're not lizards. But the technical name is scroll. I was speaking we to the people who upright. don't. We walk upright. We're not crawling on the ground in the dirt. Just an alien race. Alien race. Alien race. Do you have a thing for alien races? <laughs> Whatever your thing is. It's not is. easy being green. It's not easy being green. <laughs> Kermit relates to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so what is your Instagram so people can find, follow, and support you My as Instagram well? is bald.is.beautiful. Perfect. See yeah. guys on one everywhere. Yes. Bald is beautiful. Bald is beautiful. Get it. Yeah. Yes. Support. Yes. Please do so. Yes. Um, thank you for coming on, Sharon. Thank we you. appreciate it. It was Absolutely. lovely to meet you guys. We have well, we have a musical guest. We're gonna yes. we're gonna Ooh. use that terminology. Um, Aina will be on with us when we come back. Everyone hang tight and we'll be back in a minute. Yes. Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, we got a new guest in the house. Aina's with us. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Okay, so I have to be very honest right now. Okay. Otherwise, I'm going to be a disaster. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I've been following you for a minute, okay. and I think you're amazing. You're welcome. I also think you're extremely attractive, and I feel like I need to acknowledge that, or I was going to like not be able to function during this situation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. So I just, I'm good now, guys. Everything's going to go great. And here we are. Good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so one thing that I read about you that I really liked is you said you wouldn't call yourself like a rapper or a singer or an artist, you just call yourself a creator. Yeah. Which I kind of feel like is how a lot of people are today because it's what you got to do to get as a piece of yet, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, and you seem pretty down to create whatever you, I mean you create, you got podcasts going on, you got your music going on, it's possibly you could have a promo or clothing on you. Change of name, maybe? <laughs> that's, that's, that's one of the goals, working on cookbooks. Right, you got your hand in a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, but you kind of started 
started writing at the age of nine, right? You had a big family, a lot of siblings. Yes. And writing was your outlet. Yes. Talk a little bit about, about that, how you kind of came to find that writing was your piece. Ooh, that's a great question. <laughs> I just knew that like within our family we had no real communication and there was no way to like really, really express myself. Yeah. So I just took to writing. Like I don't know exactly what led me there. I just know poetry, not up for poetry. No more man trying to do romantic. I always do romantic. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> it has always been in me. So it started yeah. out with poetry and then it led to, to me. At yeah. first I was a battle rapper. I don't know if y'all know this. Yeah, okay, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's that was, that was, that's how I actually started off. Okay. Off the brain, okay. you know, right? That takes some serious yeah. talent right there. Yeah, I Shit. can't do it now, yeah. but you know. <laughs> I probably can, but once they... How did you get in the zone for battle rap? That's the, you just gotta like observe yeah. everything and, and whatever come to mind. Like I've always been kind of quick on my feet mm -hmm. when it comes to anything. Like, uh huh. So you just works for me. Jump I don't, the I don't really, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, you have an album out right now, right? Mm -hmm. I miss the summer. Yes. How's that going? Um, I haven't checked the numbers, but I feel like it's going good. <laughs> so far, the feedback has yeah. been amazing. A lot of people were able to relate to that project. Right. Um. It forced people to face certain things that they wasn't willing to face at first. Um, like when it comes to the past and a lot of baggage that we carry with us from our past that, you mm -hmm. know, that we don't know. We just pack them up and move them to house to house to right. house to house. Yeah. So the album just kind of like opened people up to, you know. Yeah. They, they let, it, it, my album let people know that you're not the only one going through this. A lot of people yeah. think they go through things alone. Right, right. But that album kind of was like, nah. Yeah. yeah, we're all going through Everyone's it. Everyone's got some we're shit. We're all going mm -hmm. through it. And guys, um, if you like Pandora, like I don't know why, but I love Pandora. That's what I listen to all the time. You're on Pandora, so you can you can you can add I am to your like Pandora yeah. stations if you that want to. That was dope. I didn't know that. I was trying yeah. to submit nostalgia. Yeah. And the whole album was on yeah, the there already. I was like, oh. Yeah, you I can didn't... make a radio station after you on yeah. Pandora if you want. Uh, that's you can. fucking bomb. <laughs> yeah. Man. And your songs are on Instagram too, so everybody who likes to add a little song to their post mm -hmm. on their story, you can add some of that on there too. Okay. Tell, tell your friend, tell a lover, you yes. know, all that good stuff. Yeah, do that. Um, so <laughs> you were in the middle of a 30-day sex cleanse. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Dang. Which come right out I really with it. like how you challenged other people, like, hey, get on board and whatever the fuck it is you're working on, whether it's reading a book, whether whatever it is, finish that project. Make some shit happen. Yeah. Which is amazing. How's that going? Um, it's challenging for me. Yeah. But a lot because of people you love don't know sex that. Or the creative part. <laughs> no, it's the it's the sex part. That's, okay. that's challenging. But you know, everything is energy. Mm -hmm. We just label it be like sex, you know, whatever. Right, right. Um and it's actually a part of your genius. Mm. That energy is okay. a part of your genius. Would, so the way that we do energy exchange when it comes to sex is actually not saying that's that's not the way we're supposed to do it, but for the most part, we're supposed to use it mm -hmm. to tap into our, our genius. Like, the, yeah, <laughs> no, that's cool. And that's do just, something yeah. creative. So the thirty days is like okay, that energy that you you put into sex. You can actually just you know, either things. start right, something, right. a business that you want mm -hmm. to start, a lesson that you want to learn, right. and, or something that you started and haven't finished. Like just take that energy because it actually works. Man. It actually, mm -hmm. I would. I <laughs> it bet it does work. Yeah. Parts of you that you didn't even know needed that opens. Bride, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So guys, get off your Tinder for the next thirty days. <laughs> See if you can make that I have never commitment. Been on Tinder. People, people on there playing like that. Me on Tinder. Oh, like, all type of dating apps gross. that I never I, knew about. The people slide in my DM like, I know it's not you. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not me. They know how I talk. Like the, the way people talk. Right, yeah. right, right. They just yeah, they just use my pictures and date <laughs> people. Like, that's crazy. That's horrible. Mm -hmm. I was about to say, oh, I hate that, but I'm like, I've never experienced that. <laughs> 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 you never been catfish though. No. No, no I haven't fuck, either. No. I will never ever put myself in that situation well i ever. feel like if someone isn't willing to let you look at their instagram i'm, I'm gonna like question here's the thing if somebody face. has an iphone and they're not willing to facetime you when they like this that, that true. i'm this like okay, you don't even need an iphone nowadays you got instagram yeah exactly like how are you not whatsapp there's a lot of stuff that you please, can see yes. people face ridiculous i thought i got catfish one time i went really? to dallas but it but she recently um hit me up again and apologized I think she was just nervous. So I, I actually know it's her now. Because oh. we supposed to meet up when I got to Dallas. Uh -huh. And, and did it didn't happen? Like, yeah. yeah. And she's like, can I have a second chance? And you're like, uh, <laughs> I think I'm good. I think right. I'm good. Uh, 
I mean, because I, I respect honesty. Just be like, hey, I'm nervous. I, we not meeting today. I would have respected that at that time, but it happened yeah. later. Like, she right. didn't tell me the truth until, like, two years later. Oh, That's a lot weird. of time to get the courage to tell you the truth. Yeah. So your podcast is Figuring It Out. Yes. Um, you got a lot of good topics on there. Thank you. Right? You jump into bisexuality. Yeah. You jump into orgasms pertaining to men attempting to give them to women. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favorite is a guy that's like... Oh, I'm gonna make you come so hard. I'm like that's because hey. women have lied to them so long. It's not gonna happen, brother. <laughs> how many? Is, you know how many women <laughs> fake orgasms with me? A lot. Me? I didn't even know that until I walked in the house. Which you know, I got sisters. Mm -hmm. I have like three. I have three sisters. One past. And I had walked in the house and I said something once, once I heard it. And you should saw their faces. Like they didn't want to be honest about it. it was like, <laughs> no, I didn't do that. I was like, is it that bad? And then right. you look up the statistics, but a lot of that has to do with women also. Being I'm not going to put everything on the men okay, because okay. women have these insecurities mm -hmm. and they be in their head okay, doing okay. sex and that, that comfort is not there, that relaxation is not there, that trust is not there. Yeah. So it, it's hard for them to actually... Right. So you, have to have, I, you have to have a connection between your partner. Yeah, that's yeah, all like why you land with something. people you're not connected you, with. Right. You know, that you can't just... I, you can't just go right into it. You've got to... I mean, you could. When but women, but like, you could, but it don't work for women. It's no, just, yeah. you, need, you need the ease. You need the... The, right. the foreplay. Yeah, right. women need a warm up, a thirty minute exactly. warm up. Thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> women need that, that thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Get them to that. Okay, where they just can't take it no more, and then they, you they, you're in a better position to actually make them. Work so put the fucking word in here first. Humans, yeah. men, or women, whoever. Women whatever are not that is, impressed. Put it in. Women are not men. They don't just. Right. It's not that <laughs> it's rapid. Not. not that rapid. Now sure me is different. I'm like, I think my mental is ninety percent male, so. Yeah, Yo, you okay. kiss me at one spot is off. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Amazing. So I saw that you were talking about how you lived in LA for three years and well, how four now. Oh, yep. four now. Mm -hmm. Old post. And how when you um, you know, you kind of made this nice observation that a lot of people come to LA and, and in a way they lose themselves. Mm -hmm. But you found you really found yourself. Yes. Like, why do you think that is? Did your research. Girl, I'm all about shit. <laughs> She's in it. Told you I had a crush on you. Whatever. Um, God don't really have to put me through too much for me to get the hit, like for me to learn quick. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my trials really came. I mean, of course I had trials. I grew up in Chicago, the hood of Chicago, yeah. of course. But it was something about L.A. like that really, really tested me and it showed me who I really was and mm -hmm. what I needed to work on. So I found myself here and a lot of people, they think they found themselves and as soon as they come here, it's like, whoo. And pull the truth mm. of who they really are sure out of them. So, yep. me, I just, yeah, I know not to take life for granted. I know exactly who I want to be, what I want to do, and I knew that for sure when I got there. Yep. Just yep. by going through things. Okay, okay. So, that rejection was real from the women. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why <laughs> do you think that is? Why do you think that rejection. is? Um, like it was well, much different here than it's Chicago. It's more about survival. It's more okay. like you have to have the money mm -hmm. for the most part here. Like it's it's like finding a, a needle in a haystack when it comes to somebody who actually want to build. Right. You know what I mean? Right, and, right, right. And, and love you and willing to right. start from the bottom right. with you. Mm -hmm. That's like finding a needle in a haystack here. I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so guys, listen. If you don't watch Aina's social media, I encourage you to do so because. You don't talk about a lot of shallow shit on your social media. No, I mean, you're, you got a lot of depth. You got a lot of depth to you. I mean, you even were talking about parenthood the other day, and I was like, look at you talking about parenthood and <laughs> shit. Um, I mean, a lot of parents got it confused. It's yeah, fun. yeah. And so I think that's really cool. And you're very, um, I would say, open with those who follow you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like an everyday conversation. You're just talking about what matters. You talk a lot about frequency vibration and how, you know operating at different frequencies, which. I think it's kind of awesome because a lot of people are just out there Trolling. throwing around mm -hmm. ass and cash. So it's like um, <laughs> it depends on their goals. Like if, if pe the people made that popular, that's mm -hmm. the reason why a lot of people they hop on whatever is popular. And I right. just I'd rather just play my part and do me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like everybody else doing that other stuff. Like I don't. Yeah. I'm cool. I'd yeah. rather be a light. Cause it's a bunch of, it's a lot of darkness. That there you know is, I mean? on, yeah. On this, on this plane, 
And uh, yeah, I just rather be a light. Now, sometimes I do have to check people, so don't get it confused. Because a lot of <laughs> there you go. A lot of people think because you're putting out good vibrations and you're positive for the most part, they think that you are a, a doormat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Far from that. Mm -hmm. I made a conscious decision to be positive. Mm -hmm. yep. You know what I mean? That was a choice. That's I'm not here to be light by anybody. Right. I'm choosing to be positive because that's what I want to do. I'd rather be a light. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But that doesn't mean I'm being nice to be light. Mm -hmm. Right. No, you got to put yourself first. Yeah, big difference. Yeah. Also, congratulations because you were just nominated for Best R&B Song, right? The Indie Thank Music you. Awards. Thank you. Way to go. Way to go. Thank you. Um, I also feel like your abs need a congratulations because they're pretty awesome. <laughs> Jesus, Chrissy. <laughs> she puts them out on social media. That is her own fault. Give me a fucking break. <laughs> and you just talk about doing calisthenics, so. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yep. I'm starting it. I do a little in my weight training, but I didn't know that's what that was. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. But I really want to, like, strengthen my core, so I'm going to incorporate that more into my yeah. weight Yeah. So you also have a record label. Right through K9, um, not so much. That was like back in the day. No, I, you know I put it, I put it out there as a label, but I am the only artist because okay. I'm not looking to add artists as of okay. right now. Okay. But once I get everything like off the ground, then yeah, more than likely, yeah. Okay, that's what I was gonna ask you, mm -hmm. but not at the moment, guys. So don't not get too at the excited. Moment, sorry. Don't get too excited. <laughs> okay, so what's upcoming for you in the near slash far future? Give us Ooh. both both scenarios. Ooh, working on another visual. Okay. Um, I just shot nostalgia. A video for nostalgia so i got another single that i haven't even put out there because i'm working on another project called colors and then another project called girls just want to have fun which i'm taking female talent whether you a poet a graphic designer um you play an instrument i'm putting a lot of female talent together on this one project that's awesome sweet way to go thank you so we're a little sad that you aren't gonna perform for us today. I know. I'm sorry. I, you know, I looked at you guys. You know, <laughs> so I did. I did give it a good, but I didn't pay attention to the fact that it wasn't us. Yeah, we're know. pretty. We're pretty like up close and personal. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with that. I like the up close person. That's mm -hmm. how I want okay. my tour to go. Yeah. Okay. You know, I got a tour, the Black Lion Experience, kicking off on my birthday, August 8th. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Tell us about that. Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, and no then, show in LA, no show. What? It, I'm still warming up to liking y'all. You know, it's not the natives here; it's the transplants. It's not the people who was born and raised in L.A. It's you don't like the transplants. It's the transplants that get lost. It's not You can't get lost in L.A. You born from L.A. Now, it's some people, they're in the entertainment business. They get lost. But for the what most part. What if you're part, a transplant in the entertainment business, but uh -huh. you feel like you're not lost? Yeah. Um, I said I'm still warming up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. But like maybe, if, you, maybe if you've lived here for 16 years, then do you, no move, do you move out of transplant status? I got Beach Pride, maybe. Maybe. I haven't set the contract on that one yet, mm. but Long Beach Pride. I might be doing that one. We'll have to discuss this later. Long Beach Pride. Mm. Okay. I'm not, I had a show in L.A. with Messiah Fest. Um, I'm not against L.A. It's just, like, for me to put that as my first mm -hmm. tour. Okay. Then no. 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 I feel you. I feel you. So why is Chicago not the first tour? Oh, it's on there. But it's just Atlanta's the first. Oh, are you, you going out with yeah. Okay. I got to close it out with my, I my got you. Town. I got you. So yeah. people are like, oh my God, I will fly to Chicago to see Aina. Where can they get this information? Ooh, AinaBrion.com. Mm -hmm. That uh, if you sign up for the newsletter, you get all the updates, monthly updates on everything that I got going. Awesome. That's cool. Yeah. Love so it. cool. <laughs> <laughs> Just over well, here. Well, <laughs> Aina, we appreciate your time. Thank I you for coming on. House. We're super stoked about your journey, guys. Please follow, support this woman. Uh, what is your Instagram? Aina Brion, A I N A B R E I Y O N. I'm still learning how to flow that. <laughs> yeah. How long ago did the name change come into play? Cause 2017. Okay, because you've done a pretty good job with branding. It's mm. really across yeah. everything. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're welcome. But people didn't don't know. Uh, they used to call me Temple, and I just outgrew that. You know, when you think of Temple, like somebody said, "Her name is Temple," you're gonna automatically box me in. Yeah, yeah. absolutely you know I mean? right. So yeah. I changed my name because of that. Yeah. So, and when you say they, you did not think of this name like someone dubbed you Temper and you just went with it? I don't know. They called me Temper um, <laughs> in Chicago. Okay. Yeah. Actually, Growing would up, like to hear the story as to why that started? <laughs> <laughs> I've always been, always been a sweetheart. Uh -huh. okay. But uh -oh. with a short fuse because I didn't understand how could you not be nice to sweet people. Mm -hmm. So if this you, if you point. test me, then like I, a koala. I snap. 
like a koala. Mm. Koalas are chill. They're nice and sweet mm. until you fuck their shit up, yeah. and then oh. you will. That's you will. Are koalas ruthless? Oh, koalas can will be. attack can you. Can be. Yeah. Well, I kind of uh, like then that. Like, and then they're super chill afterwards. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Do they move fast when they attack? Yes. Really? Oh my god, I got so a feeling she, she want to try out. No, I'm not going to try, but <laughs> no. I do kind of want to watch a video about this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think Koalas so, attack me. Things to learn every day. Don't mess with a koala. I'm not going to mess with a koala. <laughs> or I eat it for that matter. <laughs> okay. um, guys, this has been another week of Females Unfiltered. We're yes, like yes. slinking towards the end of the season. Oh I know. What the fuck? Um, Super weird. But we appreciate everybody who supports us. You guys are amazing. Yes. We're always live at Mixology 101. Come on down, get a drink. Ask for Nikki. She's a bartender. Yes. Spa girls, thank you for the vodka. As are always. you a bartender here? No. No, Nikki. Nikki. Oh. Nikki. We always shout out Nikki. Hey, Nikki. Nobody yeah. gave me their names. Let's, let's do this fuck. again. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and from the top, this is Ayana Brianna. Um, guys, we appreciate you. Thank you. And thank you for coming. Yes, that was thank amazing. You. Thanks for having me. Uh, we'll see everybody next week. Bye, guys.